Oh, look at that picture. Look at that. Oh. How we doing, young, everyone? That's a young admit. Yeah, oh. really? Talk about a new student. All right. Okay, Michelle. All righty. Good afternoon or good evening to everyone. My name is Michelle Fletcher, and I am the academic recruiter for the college. I hope that everybody is doing well, and thank you for joining us today. Over this next hour, we want to talk with you about how to get started at CVCC. We want to talk with you about programs and opportunities that we would love to have you take advantage of. We have a terrific panel here this evening, and they are chomping at the bit to talk with you. So we're gonna get started here in just a few seconds. We also have a very special guest with us uh, this evening, Mr. Mike Fine. He is the coordinator of library services uh, at CVCC. He will be talking with us about the importance of the library and how to use the library for your academic success. So we've got a lot of good things that we wanna to talk to you about and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, Dean Ferris is gonna come and say hello and after that, Brittany Cochran will come and lay out the rules of engagement. Well, hello everyone. We are so happy to see you all here tonight. Uh, we always have fun. Uh, we were saying a little while ago, this is the 31st Zoom information session that we have done since uh, we, we moved things over to a virtual environment. And we love this one as much as we did the first one. So we're grateful that you uh, decided to join us tonight uh, like Michelle said, got a lot of great information for everyone. And well, that's probably about all you're going to hear from me. I just want to thank you very much on behalf of everyone at the college and welcome you. And now I'm going to send it over to Brittany Cochran with some of the rules of engagement for the evening. Brittany? Hey, everyone. Welcome. So for some of you, this may be your first Zoom meeting. So I'm just going to go over um, some tips for you in the bottom left hand corner. You should see a little icon that says mute. That's how you're able to mute and unmute yourself. So feel free um, anytime during the session, if you wanna go ahead and ask a question or talk, you can go ahead and just unmute yourself. You'll also see right to the right of that, your video option. So we love to see smiling faces. Feel free to go ahead and share your video if you want. And then um, in the middle of your screen, you should see a little icon that says chat that's gonna open up the chat box for you. So you can also type your questions um, that you may have for us in the chat and then we'll get to them as we go through the session. I just wanna point out, we will have a question and answer um, opportunity at the end of the session tonight. So you can also hold on to your questions then if you would like. Also, there's a little icon that says reactions. That's how you're able to give us a little thumbs up or a clap if you hear something that you like. And then I just wanna make everyone aware um, in your screen at the kind of top right, you should see an option where you've got speaker view or gallery view. That is how you're able to change the view if you're on a computer. Um, I know if some of you are using a cell phone, it might be a little bit different and you might be able to only see the, the speaker at the time that they're speaking. So that kind of sums up um, the Zoom session. We are ready to get started and we are gonna go ahead and start with our first poll. And this poll is just um, finding out how you found out about the session tonight. So we want to know how you heard about the session, if it was through a friend, social media, email, text, and um, just go ahead and select that option. And by the way, the polls are anonymous, so um, we'll have a few more polls throughout the session tonight. We don't know what you're answering, so just gives us good feedback. A few more seconds for everyone to answer the poll here. All right, so we'll go ahead and share these results. So it looks like pretty much through text and email, you guys found out about the session. So that is great to know. Okay, I'll close that poll out and you guys can close that on your screen and I will pass it on to our first presenter, coordinator of library services, Mike Fine, to talk to you about our library. Good evening, thank you for inviting me here. I'll just go quickly over some of the resources that we have for you. Uh, Basically, let me start off with sharing the main web page for the library. Um, we'll go with um, 
pardon me here, as I get used to this, let me share the screen here and we'll go ahead and share the main library page. Now to get to this page, you would want to go to the CVCC main page, centralvirginia.edu. Then you would go to student services. And then there would be a uh, link on the left that says library and click on that. And we have a little introduction to our library services during this uh, pandemic. And there is a link to our digital library resources. This is a guide that we set up and let me go and click on this, see if it will come up for you. And this gives you a listing of our number of our, our resources that we have for you. We have several hundred databases that you can use to find millions of articles, ebooks, streaming videos uh, that will help you with your research. This will help you not only with your academic work here at CVCC, but should you go on for a bachelor's, for a graduate degree, this will help you learn the principles for doing research. You can look at our databases by their names. Also, we have them arranged by subject. We've also included here some of our more popular databases here. But all of these you can, you can view from home. Basically, once you have uh, started classes, you would click on these links here and a page would come up for you to use your MyCVCC login and password and that would get you into these databases. We also have a number of research guides that cover most of our areas of research or uh, curricula, such as biology, business, various careers, uh, Spanish resources, welding even. And then we also have a large number of ebooks which you may wish to use or check out. Also too, we still have physical items too. And we have a resource, we call it the quick search, which is this here. This searches not only for our physical items, but it's a way to search all of our resources, electronic, and physical. Now it does default to books here, but you go to, it, to an advanced search. You can search by title or subject. And you can search all the items in any language. There are hundreds of languages, dozens, that you could look for articles that we have access to. And when the semester begins, we will have the ability to, uh, to have you check out items from us. If you contact us, we will bring it out to the back. We will give it to you there. You have to bring it back by the end of the semester, but we will have that service for you. So in a nutshell, that is what we have for you here in the, in the library for you. Any questions at all? Do you have any questions on this? So it doesn't look like we have any questions yet in the chat. So Michael Ferris, do you have I, a question? I just, I just, I, I would, I, I'd just be doing a disservice if I didn't thank you, Mike, for showing us that because as students, and I'll tell you guys, I'm a student right now as well. And I use this service to do a, a lot of excellent research. It made it so easy to do. So thank you, Mike. Uh, because that is, this is a powerful research tool, made even more so because of the virtual environment that we're in. So uh, it really is a great resource uh, and very appreciative for that. Certainly, it's my pleasure. In fact, maybe if we have enough time, I, I, I could do a quick search to see what they yes. can find. Do it. And I'm going to do this, this might sound strange, but I'm going to do a search on a book that I just recently read. Uh -huh. Ah, here's the book. It's Through the Maelstrom. Of course, you see it backwards because of the way this camera works. But this is a memoir of a soldier who fought the Germans. He's Russian, but it's his 
It's his memoirs of fighting the Germans from 1942 through 1945. And uh, much of the fighting where he was, was at a place called Rejev. And interestingly enough, it found two articles as well about that, one of which is, it's been translated, but it's in Russian. And I speak Russian, it's one, of, it's one of my interests. But let me pick something that may be of a bit more interest. Let's do a title search or let's do a key, keyword search. And I'm gonna put in Kansas basketball for my alma mater. <laughs> now, I found 42,529 items. Books and media, there's three. Full text online, 42,000 plus items. Peer reviewed journals, stuff that's in academic journals, 1,264. Newspaper articles, 29,805. And it goes on like that. Biography, educational films. Like hey that. Mike, Mike, can I ask you a question? Sure. How is that, how is this database different than just Googling Kansas basketball? What can I find in the library that I can't find online? Well, this will be a lot more directed search in that the nice thing about Google is it gives you everything that you want. The bad thing is that it gives you everything that you've asked for. That is, you really can't narrow down the results. Google will search for all those words. So if you have Kansas, in 5 million articles, in basketball, in 10 million articles. So you got 15 million articles it could possibly go through. If those two words coincide, it's gonna show up there. But this will actually give you a bit more directed search. Plus also, you can do things by, like by searching by subject. And I think that's one of the easiest ways or the best ways to find something. People love Google, but again, you're going to get a bazillion items that you can't go through, whereas this will give you a lot more, uh, when I say directed search, it's a lot more focused search. And so that's why this sort of search also saves you time because you're not searching just for physical items. It gives you the electronic items as well. So if you were to start with this search, this would be one of the best things that you could do. Now, mind you, these three books or videos are online, but if it had, if we had a book about Kansas basketball, it, a physical book, this, this would also show up here. So again, this particular resource is one of the best things you can do. And having spent years on my th thesis for my Russian degree, I can assure you something like this would have made things a lot easier for me. And again, you have all this stuff at, at your fingertips. You can search from it from home, from the beach. You could be in say Brussels, Belgium. You could still search this because this is over the internet. And you could just type in that my CVCC login and password and you get access to it anywhere in the world. Yeah, that really is, that really is neat. And, and oftentimes if we, you know, directly for our students, for, for those of you that are out there that are gonna start your first semester with us, you know, you're gonna have to take, in most cases, in, in English and a psychology course, and your instructor is gonna say, and I want your sources to be peer reviewed, right? Or I want a journal article and Google goes, but so far on that, but this, this will hand it to you on a silver platter. So uh, yeah, it's, it's great, Mike. I really appreciate uh, you sharing that with us tonight. Certainly, certainly. Anyway, let me go ahead and I'll stop the sharing here and I will turn this over to uh, Karen Alexander of our admissions office. Take it away, Karen.
Okay, thanks. Welcome, everyone. We're always happy to see students come out, incoming students, because we love to be before you and speak to you and just showcase what CVCC has to offer. So I take it that many of you on this call probably have already applied for admission. If so, that is wonderful. Once you have received your confirmation, you are an accepted CVCC student. So I'll give you a few tips on things you can do to kind of walk through, get things ready, um, check some holds and different things on your account, just to make sure you have everything lined up, ready to get your classes set up for the fall semester. So if you have not yet applied, it's easy to do. All you have to do is go to our website, centralvirginia.edu, and click on the link that says apply. And the application only takes about five to 10 minutes to complete. And as I mentioned, once you have that confirmation, you are good to go. You'll get a student ID number. It'll be seven digits. This is the number you'll use to identify yourself and uh, to make requests for services through the college throughout your time of enrollment. So if you already have that, um, you also on your confirmation screen, you should get uh, indication whether you are an in-state or an out-of-state student. Now, if you are a lifelong Virginia resident, or if you have lived in Virginia for at least one full year, then you likely will qualify for in-state tuition. This is the best available tuition rate, and that is a benefit that's reserved only for Virginia residents. So if you feel that you should qualify for that, just take a look at your account. Uh, you can sign back into your application to look at that to make sure you are coded as an in-state student, or you can speak with your academic counselor or navigator who you'll meet later on the call, and they can help you confirm that on your account as well as you get things set up. Now, if you have transcripts um, from previous colleges that you've attended, you can go ahead and submit those to us. Even though we are working primarily remotely right now, we are receiving both mail and electronic transcripts five days a week, Monday through Friday. So please get those sent in, as well as your high school transcript, regardless of whether you have graduated this year. Uh, if so, congratulations. Uh, if you graduated in the past, uh, send your transcript on in. We'll talk to you about ways that we can use that to help place you into your classes later on in today's call. So those are just a few things that you can do to get set up. Also, if you've not yet done so, um, there's a link in the upper right hand corner of our website, My CVCC. Click on that. This is where you will set up your own personal CVCC account. Um, your My CVCC has information about your course enrollment. You can actually register yourself for classes through here. You'll be able to see your financial account, um, courses you've registered in. You can request your transcripts through here. Your entire account will live at My CVCC. So make sure you click there. You'll set username and password, some security questions first time you log in, and that will get you all set up and ready to go. So um, with that being said, I just want to welcome you. Um, if there's any holds or anything on your account, you can speak with your counselor. They can check those out. We can work with you to get everything resolved. And just wanted to let you know that regardless of what this looks like, uh, all services are fully available to you, um, as you saw with our library services and every service through the college. We are here to serve you. So please ask any questions you have throughout the call. We'll be glad to work with you, and we look forward to welcoming you into classes then starting on August 24th. So if there are no questions right now in chat, okay, you can ask those at the end. We all will be holding to the end for a Q&A session. So any questions you have, feel free to just prepare those, type them in, and we'll be glad to help you along the way. So at this point, I'm gonna turn the call over to Mr. Ryan McNamara. He's the director of our financial aid office, and he's going to talk to you about affording college. Thanks everyone. Great, thank you, Karen. Hi everybody, and welcome to this evening's presentation. So I'm in the financial aid office and I'm going to be sharing my screen with you. We're going to go through a brief PowerPoint presentation. And before we get into it, I just want to let you know that if you would like a copy of this PowerPoint presentation, at the, la at the end of the slides is our email address. So send us an email and we will email you a copy of this presentation so you can take a little bit more time going through it if that's something that you would like to do. So like Karen had mentioned, uh, congratulations. Congratulations to those of you that just graduated from high school, as well as those of you that have been out of high school for a while and maybe are considering going back to school or to start college for the first time. So congratulations. So we're gonna talk about how to pay for college. Karen just went through the admission application process and what needs to be done for that. So the second thing that we wanna do is apply for federal student aid. So the way that you do that is you submit your FAFSA. The FAFSA website is fafsa.gov, fafsa.gov. Don't go to fafsa.com or fafsa.org. Those websites are gonna charge you for the same thing that you could do on your own for free. If you need any help through the process, definitely give us a call or send us an email 
and we could help you with your FAFSA. So how much does it cost to attend CVCC? As Karen had mentioned, um, there's in-state Virginia resident tuition rate, and that's $161.25 per credit hour. Meaning, if you are registered for 12 credit hours, which is considered full time, you would be charged $161.25 times 12. So that gives you an idea of the charges or how, how you're billed for the semester. So we had mentioned the FAFSA earlier, you wanna complete the 2020-21 FAFSA if you're planning to attend this upcoming fall, August 24th is when classes begin. So again, you wanna submit the FAFSA. You need to make sure that you create a, um, a federal student aid ID, a FSA ID. If you already have an ID, you don't need to create a new one. You can just use that one. I believe you have three years um, before it will expire if there's no activity on your, um, if you haven't logged in or used it for three years, then it becomes deactivated, but you have three years. So one thing to keep in mind, if you're under the age of 24, you are going to need parent information on the FAFSA. And that also means that you would need one parent to also sign the FAFSA. So they'll need to make sure they create a FSA ID as well. And one thing to keep in mind, once you submit the FAFSA, if our financial aid office requests additional documentation from you or there's something we need from you, your financial aid is not finalized until we've received all the documentation that we need. So don't think just because you submitted the FAFSA that your financial aid process is done. Be on the lookout if we, um, if we need additional information from you. So why should you complete the FAFSA? So for our fall, our, um, this last spring, for our students, of those that submitted a FAFSA, 85% of those students received some type of financial assistance. And those that did not submit the FAFSA, only 3% received financial assistance. So again, if you want financial aid, submit the FAFSA. That's the best chance for you to be eligible for aid. So we have begun awarding for this upcoming fall semester. So if you have applied and submitted your FAFSA, you should have been awarded your financial aid. If you don't see that you've been awarded your aid or you think there's something wrong with it, definitely reach out to our office. Again, the last slide will have our contact information, but reach out to us to make sure that either we didn't miss something or there's still a document out there that we still need from you. So some of the aid that you may be eligible for based on the FAFSA, there's federal grants. The Pell Grant is a need-based grant as a full-time student, you're eligible for up to about $6,300 a year. Um, you don't have to be full-time. You can be part-time, less than half-time. Um, if you're enrolled, you could be eligible for it regardless. So that's one nice thing about the Pell Grant. There's also the FSEOG, which is a, another federal grant. The one thing I want to point out with that grant is that it's a first come, first serve. So if you're eligible for it, we will award it to you, but we only have a limited amount of grant money for that program. So the sooner you get your FAFSA in and finalize everything, if you're eligible for it, the more likely you will be to receive that grant. So we also have state grants that are available. There's the Commonwealth Grant. That's a Virginia resident grant. Um, the, the catch with that one, you have to be enrolled at least six credit hours, which is considered half time. So you have to be enrolled six credit hours or more for the semester to be eligible for the Commonwealth Grant. There is another grant, the Part-Time Tuition Assistance Program, which is for in, if you're enrolled for one to eight credit hours. So if you're enrolled for one credit hour all the way up to full time, there is aid available to you. So make sure you understand that you don't have to be enrolled full time in order to be eligible for financial aid. We also have a CVCC Educational Foundation Scholarship. Now with this scholarship, this foundation scholarship, there is an additional application that's required. Again, the website is there at the bottom of this slide presentation, um, but just keep in mind there is an additional application that is needed for it. Students are applying for this foundation scholarship right now. Um, so if you, if you think you'd like to see if you're eligible for additional aid, I would definitely encourage you to apply for the foundation scholarship. 
there are also loans that are available. So the federal student loans are guaranteed. They're through the Department of Education. So they do not go through a credit check. There's no income verification. Um, if you want the student loan, there's um, an online form that you, we have to have you fill out. Um, but you fill it out and you receive the loan. So if you need additional money either to help cover your expenses um, or help cover the remaining balance of your tuition, uh, these are guaranteed loans that you're eligible for. We also have part-time work available. It's a work-study position. So once everything gets back to normal and everybody's back on campus together, there are opportunities for you to work on campus, which is very convenient if you're attending classes and then you, after class, you go straight to work down the hall and you get paid just like a regular job. Um, so that's, um, you know, that's an added benefit. The average student works about 15 hours a week and they get paid once a month, just like, just like you're working a normal job. So we also have a net price calculator on our website. So if you have not applied for financial aid and you're just trying to get an idea of how much aid you may be eligible for, there's a quick, this is quick, question, you know, a handful of questions that are asked. It takes no more than 30 seconds, and it will give you a good estimate of what financial aid you are probably going to be eligible for for the upcoming term. We also have a tuition payment plan. So if you have a balance due for the semester and you can't find a way to pay it all up front, you can apply for the tuition payment plan, which takes that monthly or takes that balance due and spreads it out over two or three months so it's easier to make two or three monthly payments instead of one lump, one lump sum when it comes time for it to be due. So one question people ask is can you use your financial aid to purchase books and maybe even a laptop and the answer is yes you can use your financial aid for books from our bookstore or even laptop or books yeah, uh, supplies that you need for class. So the nice thing is you don't have to pay out of pocket if your financial aid can cover it, you can use your financial aid in our bookstore, which is on campus as well. So things have changed. So when you submit your FAFSA for this upcoming fall, it's looking at 2018 income information. And we know that 2018 seems like a long time ago. Um, so if you think that your income has significantly changed since then, maybe a parent has lost their job or is not working as many hours as they were in 2018, reach out to our financial aid office. Let's have a discussion about it. Let's see if there's some type of adjustment that we can make on your FAFSA to make um, your financial aid look more in line with what's going on today, not in 2018. So here's the last slide. It has our contact information. Again, if you'd like to email us for a copy of this presentation, definitely reach out to us. Our financial aid email is financialaid at Central Virginia. Dot edu. So that is the presentation. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And let's see, Brittany, do we have any questions? No questions in the chat. Does anybody have a question? Yeah, hey, Ryan. It's, it's Michael Ferris, the Dean of Enrollment. How are you, buddy? Hi, boss. Good. <laughs> <laughs> No, when when uh, when we talk about charging books uh, and supplies at the bookstore, you know, now more than ever, I just I wanted to give a little bit of a shout out to our our folks at the bookstore. They are open, and uh, they they're they're open in person, and and I'll tell you, they have exactly what students need technology wise. And so if you're if you're on financial aid. And you know, a laptop has become way more important, really, than than it ever has for our students. Um, they have what is needed. They they have, you know, uh, they have more actually than than what is needed, and they also have what exactly is needed. And so, if you're if you're one of those folks where you, you need to you need to get a laptop in order to make some things happen for fall. Um, that is a that is a powerful resource um, for good for making sure that you get what you need. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there, I, Ryan, and I, I appreciate you giving me the space to do it. But it is really important um, now more than ever, honestly. Yeah, it is. It is helpful. Um, before I pass it on, I just want to say hi to a couple people. Joel, I see you there. I think I was emailing back and forth with you today. And Martha, I'm glad you're on the call. Hi. 
uh, we'll get you taken care of. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna now pass it on to Brittany Cochran, who is one of our college navigators, and she's gonna go through the next steps with you. Thank you, Ryan. Hi, everyone. Yep, it's good to see some familiar faces and familiar names. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on some of the next steps, but if you guys want to, I'd like for you in the chat, just go ahead and type if you're a dual enrollment, if you're a dual enrolled student or maybe a first year college student, if you just graduated high school or if you're a transferring student, just uh, go ahead and feel free to type that in the chat if you're comfortable doing that. Um, so we'll get an idea of who we've all got in the room. But so we have heard from um, the admission process, applying and financial aid. Uh, my role as a college navigator is to help you throughout your first year be successful. So if you haven't already applied to the college or done your FAFSA just yet, you can reach out and those are um, some of the things that I can help you walk through um, getting those done. But once you've got, got those two steps finished, your next step is to make your class schedule. So getting to kind of a more exciting part maybe, but before you actually enroll in classes, we need to determine your placement into uh, certain classes like English and math. So depending on your program that you're interested in, that can vary. So what we like to do first is for any of you recent high school graduates, congratulations, please have your high school transcript sent. So those uh, we're able to use for placing you into classes by looking at your GPA or your test scores. So we need to review your high school transcripts to determine where your placement is at. If we are unable to use your transcripts, we have other methods we'll go over with you. There's typically a placement test that you would take and so we're able to share that with you um, virtually so you can take that at home and that kind of helps us best advise what level you're at. If you are not recent, uh, not a recent graduate, but maybe out of high school a few years, um, but haven't taken any college level classes, we can still refer to your high school transcripts. Now, for those of you that may be transferring in from another college, if you've taken any college work anywhere else, you need to get those college transcripts to us as well. If you've taken courses like English and math, those could transfer in and count as meeting the, re the requirements. Um, if you've never attended college before, but maybe you're out of high school five years or more, then we have an adult self-informed option that you can do. Again, we go over this with you um, to determine where your placement's at, but essentially that is you opting out of taking the placement test and placing yourself into the level of math or English that you feel you're at. Um, we want to meet with you during this placement. This isn't something you can do on your own. So you'll want to schedule an appointment and you can do that by meeting with us just like this through a Zoom meeting or over the phone. We can also work for you over email. For any of you that um, have applied, when you log into your MyCVCC account, you'll want to look for the icon that says navigate. That is how you're able to schedule an appointment yourself. And then I'm also going to be providing our contact information in the chat soon and you can call the front desk to schedule an appointment or you can reach out to us directly um, and get an appointment scheduled out that way as well. So once placement has been determined, then you're ready to enroll and make your class schedule and we help you with that. We'll um, make your fall schedule for you. This fall is gonna look a little different being mostly virtual. Um, we've got some classes on campus and then um, most of our classes being offered online in real time, which means they meet online at a certain time. And then we also have total virtual classes with no meeting time assigned. So we can go over that with you if you wanna mix or if you want just classes that meet online or totally virtual classes. So we're there to help you with that. So that kind of sums up your next step. We're gonna do a quick poll and I'll review the chat to see if we have any questions. And let's see, this poll is going to find out what um, programs you guys are interested in. So again, go ahead and just select the um, one you're most interested in because it won't, it won't allow you to select more than one. And again, this is anonymous, but this will help us figure out what you guys are interested in. Brittany, while they're taking the poll, may I say something? Sure. Yes, for those of you who indicated that you are dual enrolled, Please know that uh, Donna Grant Page is our dual enrollment coordinator and she's on the call as well. So if you have any questions, please uh, just put them out there because we can get them answered. Yes, great. I was just scrolling back through the chat. So I'm glad to see we've got some 
dual enrolled students in here. Looks like Donna replied back, so that's great. Okay, so I'm gonna end this poll and share the results. Looks like we've got a good mix. A lot of you are interested in transferring. Um, and then we've got some interested in our allied health fields and then welding or machine tool and um, the culinary arts and management. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to our next presenter, one of our counselors, Mac Mark Zicola, to talk to you a little bit more about those programs. Thank you, Brittany. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. There are primarily two purposes uh, to CVCC. You're looking to transfer or you're looking to enter the workforce sooner rather than later. We're going to talk about those two paths right now. So for those of you interested in entering the workforce, I saw some of you were interested in culinary arts, in uh, machining and welding, and some of the allied health programs. Every day you attend class, be that in person or virtually, view it as a job audition. You are making an impression every time you step foot on campus, whether it's, oop, I've just created this recipe, oop, I've taken this test, I've created this hammer, that was one of my projects within machining. Your instructors are going to be observing you and watching. Do you show up to class on time? Are you prepared? Do you take pride in your work? When you're given time to work on projects, are you on your telephone texting someone or are you actually taking care of business and working on your class? So these observations are going to help you when it comes time for, to graduate. We've got wonderful relationships with area businesses here in Region 2000. And these relationships have been developed and cultivated over time. And we've got many, many, many quality programs. So please, when you come and take these classes, you give it your all so that when it's time for recommendations, letters of reference, your instructors are going to be happy to be in your corner to recommend you for a terrific career opportunity. Now, some of these programs, Allied Health, there are some programs that call for a selective uh, application process. It is not, ooh, here I am, I want to be a radiological technologist. Ooh, I want to be a respiratory therapist. It is a separate application process. So if you're interested in, in some of the allied health programs or in any allied health programs, please contact Brittany, myself, our colleagues, to find out, ooh, are there extra steps I need to take in order to begin my journey? Enough about uh, our, our technical and trade programs for now. Uh, the role of the CVCC when it comes to transferring is if you were to go straight to that four-year institution, there are going to be a certain number of general requirements you're going to need that make up that bachelor's degree. Your Englishes, your maths, lab sciences, histories, social sciences, speech, et cetera. Well, you can take those exact same requirements that are going to transfer to accredited colleges and universities across the continent, and you're gonna get them at a fraction of the course, of the cost. These classes are going to be of the same rigor as going to the four-year institution. A calculus class is a calculus class, just as a biology class is a biology class. The math isn't easier at CVCC because we're a community college compared to going to a four-year institution. 
it's still calculus and you still got to be able to work that math. So please, if you're thinking about transferring, uh, we've got some neat incentives. We've got guaranteed admission agreements and articulation agreements, which essentially are contracts between ourselves and a particular four-year institution, which states if you fulfill all of the obligations of that contract, you are guaranteed a seat at that institution in your major for that particular semester upon graduation. And that's a pretty nice perk, not having the stress or the weight of, oh gee, I wonder if they're going to select me. You're going to know based on the criteria of that agreement, whether or not you qualify. Uh, so again, if you're interested in transferring, uh, not a bad idea uh, to contact the counseling department tomorrow uh, and, and, and learn more about those opportunities. We've got terrific resources here at CVCC to help you along your journey. In addition to, to Mike's library services, we've got a writing center, we've got a math lab, we offer free tutoring here, we've got a career center, a student accessibilities department, all resources to help you be the best student you can possibly be. I'd like to wrap this uh, segment up with, with a story, and it's actually two stories in one. So this is bonus night at CVCC. So two stories of two students, both going uh, in, in similar directions, but one from one end, one from the other. So oftentimes, students don't know what they want to study. They're unsure of what career path they want to take. And I'm here to tell you that that's perfectly fine and it's okay. No matter all the research, research that you do, exploring careers and opportunities, getting input from parents, family, and friends, Sometimes, no matter how much work you put into it, at some point in your life, you might discover, oh, you know what? This isn't for me. So there was a, a young man a few years back, started in machining, loved machining, loved working with his hands. That's what he wanted to do. He did well. He went through our machining program, got done, was, was hired by a local, local machining outfit, and, and had a successful career. But early on in that career, his interests changed. And he thought, you know, I, I want more. He came back for his transferable business administration degree and then wound up transferring to a four-year institution. Now, when he first started out at CVCC, business administration was not even on his radar. But again, we don't know sometimes what life presents, our thought processes, uh, circumstances within our, our life, that we might want to go another path than originally expected. And again, there is nothing wrong with that. Um, the other story, gentleman went through his academic path, secured a Juris Doctorate. And then at that time, once he secured that, he learned that, oh, I don't want to be an attorney. It's not what I want to do. Came to CVCC, entered the machining program, and is now a machinist. So again, different paths. It is not wrong not to know what you want to do for the rest of your life. It's perfectly fine if you have questions, wonder about, gee, what are my options here at CVCC? Please call us and we'd be happy to, to, to talk you through the various programs, be it transfer or technical trade. Brittany, I'm out of breath. So without further ado, I'd like to send it back to you for another poll. Great, thank you, Mark. All right, so another po poll for you all. This is to find out what social media you guys are using. So go ahead and pick the one that you feel you use the most 
because we just want to know what's the best way to connect with you. Some of these I hadn't even heard of. And for those who select other, if you wouldn't mind typing in or unmuting yourself and letting us know what that other is. I know, I know in our last session, I, we had a student who just wasn't on social media. So that was why they selected other. I see we have some gamers in here tonight who have picked this board. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna end this poll and I'll share the results. So you all can see, uh, looks like majority are using Facebook and Snapchat, Instagram, and we've got a couple others. So I will- Facebook thing. Yeah. You know, every, every, everybody always says nobody uses Facebook anymore, but there it is. It's right there. Pretty and cool. now I'm going to pass it on to our coordinator of student life, Ms. Deanne McDaniel, who will explain a little bit more about why we wanted to know what social media you all use. Thank you, Brittany. Um, and Michael, to your point, um, what we're finding is that most students of this generation use only Facebook events. They actually don't use Facebook to post on anymore. So I guess it's being useful for something. Um, and then they're building this whole nother platform now called uh, Facebook business or works or something like that. It's a whole nother platform. So that'll oh, be something else new. <laughs> Interesting. So, I, yeah. I was just feeling validated as, as an older <laughs> person where it's just like, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm with it. All right, anyway. uh, thank you guys for joining this evening. Um, as you see, I'm the fun part of the group. Um, we had all of these serious matters here with your academic pieces. And I come along and um, I have serious, but I also have fun. Um, student life is um, the area where you get your second piece of learning. So your first piece, of course, is your academic, which is your main focus. But then there's also learning that takes place when you're not in class through different things that you do um, on campus. Um, and of course, that happens through your involvement with student life. So some of those opportunities that you can get and those skills that you're going to build um, can, are like relationships, definitely building new friendships, um, developing new skills, trying things that you never got to try before. And a lot of these things are things that can, oh, excuse me, I have, my allergies are bad tonight and it's raining here. A lot of these things are things that you can um, build for personally or professionally. So it's something that can help you, might not help you right away, but it can also carry you down later on in life. So how you can get involved, and I'm sure you're having many questions of how do you do this in this virtual world, um, are joining clubs. So although we may be virtual um, in this fall, we're still going to have our clubs active. Um, we are launching a virtual student center um, with a different theme than we did when we did it in the spring. Um, but in the fall, we're going to do it so that that's where we interact with you guys. So we're going to have um, rooms in there for our clubs so that they can continue to have their meetings and have interactions. And some of the clubs that we have are crew, we have a games club, we have our student veterans organization or some of our big, bigger clubs. We also have leadership opportunities that we provide. Um, we have our student ambassadors program which Brittany Cochran and Kimberly French who is not on the call this evening um, are the advisors for. Um, so that program will be structured a little different than it has in the past um, because of us being virtual, but that's a leadership opportunity that we have for you to get involved not only with you know, working with Brittany and Kimberly, but you would also work with Michelle Fletcher through her recruiting events, and then also with our Student Government Association, which is also the other opportunity that you can have for leadership is that we do have a full a Student Government Association, very similar to what you probably experienced in high school or you've heard about at other schools. And in addition to those, um, why we were asking about social media is like we've talked about us being virtual, is that we're going to move all of our activities to a virtual environment online. So you will find that when you come here, where you live a lot will be in what's called Canvas, which you'll learn about um, as you get started here at CVCC. But because that's where you are, that's where we're gonna reach out to you. So we're gonna do all of our activities through there. Um, and they're gonna be tailored quite differently because we're gonna be doing them through Zoom and through other platforms, but that's where all of our activities gonna be offered. So we're still gonna build that connection with you outside of your classes so that you can still relax and have fun and get that college experience, um, even though we might not be together on class on, on campus. So um, we look forward to having you join us um, in the fall. 
And if you have any questions, like Brittany said, she put that information in the um, chat window for you. But also when we start in the fall, you will automatically be part of the Virtual Student Center. And you will see there's times where we have open chat sessions. So you can just hop on there. And it doesn't have to be a question about student life. If you have a question about anything and you need, you need an answer to it, you can always stop in there um, to ask it. And hopefully we'll get to have some of our counselors and some of my colleagues here on the call join us in some of those chats um, so that we can chat with you throughout the semester. So again, I want to welcome you, wish you success in your time here at CVCC, and please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us because we want to make sure that your time is successful. And thank you for joining us this evening, and I'm going to pass it back to Brittany for a Q&A. Thank you, Dan. All right, everyone, we are at the question and answer time, so feel free to either unmute yourself and ask your questions or go ahead and type them in the chat and we will get them answered for you. So Brittany, I've got, I've got uh, some questions for the group tonight. How many of you guys are wondering what we're going to be doing for fall? Does everybody know how things are going to be working for fall? How our classes are going to be held? I know we've, we've done some stuff on the news and you know, we put out some Facebook, you know, posts and I send emails and stuff, but um, is everybody good with, with what's going on for fall? I'd be, if anybody would be, you know, would, would like for a little explanation about how it's going to work um, or Michelle or Brittany, if you guys think that'd be a, a good idea, I'd be happy to kind of do a real quick run through on, uh, uh, so Joel, did you say no, or Ziegler said that would be, so it's, it looks like maybe some folks would like to hear. Yeah. So, and just so you know, if you follow us on Facebook, each week I put up videos about how things are going at the college and then on our website, which I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, somebody must that somebody must have just been talking. Well, what I was saying was if you scroll down to the bottom of our website, you'll see a little YouTube icon that actually takes you to our YouTube channel where all of our videos that we make are stored and um, it, it's a great resource. So real quickly for fall, of course, we're going to be open. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking to you guys, um, but it's going to look a little different. We're going to have classes basically in, in three different types. One type is going to be completely online, a completely virtual class, um, no set day and time for meeting. Uh, we've been offering those classes for years, but now more than ever, they're, you know, gaining attention that way. The second kind of class is a really interesting class, and it would feel a lot like tonight, where you'll have an instructor that meets with 25 people on a Zoom call or Google Meet or some platform like that. And you'll all interact with one another uh, that way. That's called a virtual real-time course. And um, as a student, like I alluded to a little while ago, uh, for the, the last four months, I've been doing classes in those formats. And let me tell you, I have I've always been averse to online classes. Uh, just wasn't a fan. But I've done these real-time classes through Zoom and Google Meet, and I like them. So. And there's some practical benefits to that too. You know, you can kind of mute your microphone, need a bag of chips if you want without disturbing the whole class and stuff. So that's the second kind of class. And then the third kind for some of our classes, for those of you that were, uh, had indicated you were going to be pursuing, a, you know, a, a hands-on kind of skilled trade like machining or welding or culinary, um, those classes, we will be holding some portion of them on campus and as well as some of our laboratory science uh, classes, the lab portion will be uh, properly distanced, of course, and safe and cleaned well um, after each class, but they will be here. So that's kind of the rundown on fall in a nutshell. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? Michael, can you say something about the extended hours? Yes, I sure can. And thanks for reminding me, Michelle. Starting this Saturday, we are going to be offering extended virtual service hours. You know, right now, Monday through Friday, eight to five, we, uh, that's when we're all available. But starting this Saturday, 
uh, Saturdays and Monday evenings we'll have extra hours. So Saturday uh, we will be open nine to one. Again, that's virtually, but you you know you can call us at eight three two seventy eight hundred Saturday morning from nine to one, and we'll be glad to help you. Same thing for for Monday evening, and I'd also say because uh, we just started this last week, we are doing an, a, a, a chat now Good. with Good. students. And when you go to our website, once you're on our website for about a minute, uh, not a minute, about eight seconds, I think it is. Ryan, how many seconds is it? I think you know more than anybody, right? The last I heard was eight seconds. Eight seconds. If you're on our homepage while we're open, you know, uh, for more than eight seconds, you're going to get this little thing that pops up from Calvin the Cougar um that says hey can we help you and then boom you're, you're chatting with a live person and uh that is available um as well and that has really taken off or blown up depending on how you want to look at it uh in the last week so uh but again like i said every every week we do these kind of updates and um and it, it's good just to stay tuned like us on facebook honestly you'll get them and um but any any other questions from the group or did anybody um uh, have anything in the chat brit i see we've got um david it says online it says no placement tests are being proctored um as an alternate if uh, list of practice placement test i've done english for college composition what else do i need to do to be able to enroll in the course that one seems custom made for you Brittany. Yep, so I just replied, um, great question, David. So it sounds like you're just ready to meet with one of us, meet with one of the advisors. So you're, yeah, no, you're good. I just wanted everyone to see um, if you guys have taken your practice, practice test, your next step now is to meet with one of us so we can go over those results with you and review your transcripts from either a college or um, a high school. And then that way we can help, you know, help you determine where you need to be. And the whole point of the placement test, just so you know, is to place you in the classes that are needed for your program, whether you need a little bit more work to get to the course that you need or you're ready to go right into the class that you need. We don't want anyone enrolling in classes that are not needed, you know, for your program, so. Yeah, and we've got another great, and that was great. And Deanne, thank you so much. She's posted links to our Facebook page and our YouTube page. And we have a question from Madison. Um, for classes, do you pick which classes you want or do they assign you to one of them? Very good question, Madison. Who wants to take that one? Mark, do you want to answer that one? Sure. Madison, are you post high school? Okay, well, if you've graduated high school, you choose the classes that you want. There are some, if you're in early college, yes, graduated from high school. Yes, you get to choose what format, what times, if you want a class totally web-based, if you're looking for a remote, real-time real, uh, real class that meets Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 to 9.50 uh, in, in a Zoom setting like this, you're going to select what you think is best for you that works with your life and your schedule and is hopefully conducive to your learning style. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Madam Madison. And while I have, while I'm mic'd up, may I ask a question, please? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, this is a financial aid question. Ryan, you're on the spot. Oh yeah. Uh, so, in your presentation, you mentioned the, the, the FAFSA process stops if student documentation is required. How does a student know if documentation is required? Good question. Yeah, so when you log into your MyCVCC, so you go to our main website, centralvirginia.edu, up at the top, you'll see a link that says MyCVCC. When you log into that or sign into that, you're then going to go into, there's a lot of boxes on your screen. You're going to click on SIS, which is our information system. From there, there's, you're going to find um, a message center 
which will also include a to-do list. So you're going to have a list of things to do. We try to make it as simple as possible. They are links. You click on it. Sometimes it'll take you right to the form that we need you to fill out. Sometimes you click on it and it will allow you to do a fillable form online and submit it. So you don't even need to print anything. But that's where you'll see what is needed is through your SIS, your um, student center, communication center, something mm -hmm. like that it's called. Um, and that's where all the outstanding documents that we still need in order to finalize your financial aid will be waiting for you. Did that answer your question, Mark? <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions for Ryan or Deanne or, or Karen or Donna Grant Page? Heck, if you just want to ask them something you don't even think they know the answer to, right? Like, hey, Ryan, you talked about the Pell Grant, but uh, where did the, is that named after a person? Why do they call it the Pell Grant? Yes, it is. It is from some important Congress person Woo! back in the day that was um, that cared about education. And so actually, before it was called the Pell Grant, it was the something else. And they changed the name for Mr. Pell. Uh, the good news is it's free money. Fill out the FAFSA. You get you may be eligible for the Pell Grant. It's a grant. You don't have to pay it back. Finish your classes for the semester and you are good to go. That is a good answer. Senator Claiborne Pell, I believe. Whitney? Um, <laughs> All right. Minutes. Well, I don't see any more questions in the chat. There you so go. I'm going to pass it on over to Michelle to wrap it up. All right, thank you panel. What a great job, a lot of good information. And I think it's already been said, but it needs to be reiterated. When we hang up off this call, that does not mean that we're not available to answer any questions that you might have. So please feel free to continue to reach out to us because we want to make sure you have all the information you need as you get ready to join us in the fall. I think Michael mentioned it already, that these information sessions are recorded. They are on our YouTube channel and our Facebook. So go back and look again, again, and again, and uh, get all the information that you need. Thank you again for joining us this evening and have a wonderful night. Yes, thank you everyone. And we've got one last quick poll for you. Please go ahead and fill out. Hopefully this session was helpful and it was worth your time and you learned something new. So this is just giving us feedback on how we did. All right, awesome. So I'll go ahead and wrap that poll up. And it looks like um, it was helpful for everyone and um, most everyone learned something new, but somebody else already knew everything covered tonight. So that's great. All right, everyone. Well, thank you again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you virtually in the fall or um, for those of you that may be doing programs on campus, we'll see you on campus. Bye, Thank everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. Have a great night. <laughs>